Shimo, how do I pronounce your second name? Granel. And it's Shimo fine? Granel, that was your first yeah. Granel in Spanish, Granel in Catalan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Shimo, you're from Castellón? Yes, Castellón de la Plana. Where That's is that, Valencian please? Valencian region. Good. So, right on the Mediterranean coast. Great. And what do you do in Castellón? Um, I'm a university lecturer. Um, I, I work on audiovisual translation mm -hmm. and also on, on the information science area. So uh, my my background it's it's comes from uh, as a, an audiovisual translator, but also on software website and game localization. So you've worked as a translator on software website localization? Yeah, I've been yeah. in and out uh, okay. academia and industry yeah? Yeah. since I finished my first degree in, in translation and interpreting. Okay. And then I did a PhD on information systems applied to translators on, on how translators use technologies. Okay. Uh, so eventually... And, and now you said you're in a department of translation and information science, or how does that work? Um, it's, it's well, actually within my university, which is Universitat Jaime Primer in, in Castellón, we, we have uh, within the translation department, there's an area for uh, librarianship and, oh, okay. and information science, so okay. documentation aplicada a la traducción. Okay. And so, but I also, so that's why I, am, I also teach information literacy for, uh, for uh, medicine students, ah, for okay. media students also. Um, and we are lucky to also have some sort of uh, interdisciplinary teaching with uh, game designers and developers. So that's from, it should be science students, but they are, mm. the, 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 we've got a program which involves like half of the workload. It is based on, on programming or more mm -hmm. on the technical side, but the other half of the program involves narratives and media and okay. so on. And so uh, I got to teach them how to to get to know what localization game localization mm -hmm. involves and how to work with translators, mm -hmm. what processes does. Uh, so to, just get this clear that it, the stu half the students would be from the translation side of business and half from the programming side of business. Is that right? Or well, no, no. That, for that particular module, mm -hmm. it, it's it's a unit which is is taught uh, within the game design and development. Program. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is it's only a student from that program that okay. I have. In that. So okay. uh, for for to train translators, I mostly do that part of my teaching at master's courses, right? Where we have game localization courses. You have a master's in game localization. No, or we just a master's I, in translation. I, I, yeah. a master's I teach outside my yeah. my, my, my university. Yeah. Um, so, um, but in my at my university, that's something. I'm I'm liking quite a lot, and, and I have the opportunity of of uh, getting some seeds into the minds of, of future game developers mm -hmm. to be aware of, of what localization involves, okay. and to be aware that they can design from the very early stage of the design and even the conceptual uh, uh, conception of, of the of the game uh, that they want to go global, and mm. uh, they will need to work with translators. And their game should be designed in a way that it it uh, makes it the whole thing easier, the whole process easier. So that's why it's it's kind of it's very challenging. So but you do also, some internationalization. Yeah, yeah. It, it has to do. Well, we we draw on on GIL model. So yeah, first thing is focus global. Uh, yes. So think as 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 within an internationalization mm -hmm. process, and and then more than working on localization and translation, being aware of what challenges that involve so that, you know, they okay. can, yeah, yeah. So it, it has to do with, yeah, to um, getting them to know about internalization and, and how how this industry works. And at the same time, I'm also trying to make them aware of, about uh, the processes of accessibility. Mm -hmm. It's something we we also teach from the audiovisual translation. What do you mean by accessibility? Uh, ac uh, sensory accessibility. Yes. So, because obviously there's accessibility to to uh, interact with games involves wide degree of of, uh, of of ways of that you could um, uh, could hinder you from from uh, uh, 
use a regular user experience. Mm. So uh, we've mostly focused on the audiovisual translation side. We mostly deal with with uh, sensory. So that's uh, uh, for people who who might be deaf or have oh, okay. or people who might be blind or have partially blind. So uh, okay. we try to to develop and to localize the games in the way that they are also accessible or uh, to the to the wider extent mm -hmm. that we can. Yeah. Okay, that's great. You said you you've done your PhD in information science, and you've been in the. Just take. How do you go from a degree in translation and interpreting uh -huh. through where you've been? It's yeah, I would say that. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite a, a, an interdisciplinary. I have a, quite an interdisciplinary mind myself, and I've been in between. Mm -hmm. with, with, you know, yeah. Uh, translation always been interested in languages, so that's mm -hmm. I, how I ended up uh, studying translation back in the nineties, late nineties. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I also had an interest in 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 you know in how the industry works and business works. So I, I did some postgraduate courses on, on business management, mm -hmm. and then I started working as a translator, a technical translator and localizer in Spain. Or in Spain, it? yeah, okay. I was based yeah. in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, while I was starting my career, professional career, um, there was uh, an opportunity to uh, start up a PhD in, in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. in uh, Loughborough University. Uh, and uh, that was within a project that uh, enabled me to study how translators were using technology back then, mm -hmm. which is, it, has, it has changed and evolved quite a lot since then. But, uh, but it was one of the first studies uh, with uh, I can't recall, there were like 390 participants. I, I had uh, questionnaires and interviews with uh, getting to know to which degree of technology they were using. These participants, these are translators. So. Translators, freelance okay. translators from the UK, based right. in the UK. Yep. Yep. And, uh, and members of the Institute of Linguists. I right. don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, focusing on, on the main, which they were um, representing. Nine, about 90 percent of the market okay uh, but this would be on translation memories at that stage or, or yeah yeah they were uh, it was the focus was uh, both on on the general purpose use of technologies mm -hmm. so any kind of technology they may use for any activities producing documents like um, and working with terminology on or you know, working on the translation of themselves as with translation memories but also dealing with uh, all the business management that a uh, freelance translator has to deal with. Mm. Also uh, communicating with colleagues and using of reference materials, searching okay. for information. Okay, so the whole process. So, yep. so yeah, sure. I was yep. trying to, to cover the whole yeah, yeah. Uh, group of activities that a translator has to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Did that speak to your, um, does your professional experience help you one, do research and then does it help you teach? Is it necessary to have that professional experience? It, it, it does help a lot. I think, I think it, it's. I think I, I, I am who I am right now because the path I follow. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, could have gone some other way, but um, but everything I've done uh, as a professional translator has helped me in mm -hmm. academia. Uh, whereas, uh, or, or both when teaching, but also when researching. Mm. And actually, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's both uh, academia and, and research, because we, we in, within translation studies, we, we try to keep our research applied to our research, our applied research, yeah. rather than more of a theoretical mm. type of research. So, um, for instance, our current project right now, which deals with uh, accessibility of, of, or trying to improve uh, the accessibility of audiovisual products, such as mm. TV broadcasts, uh, documentaries, uh, fiction for children, mm. and so on. Uh, we, it, it's really connected to, to our society, to the community, to, to the needs of our community, and we have to work, and, and some of uh, the members of our team, we've work either as translators or as media broadcasters or so you have to know how okay. how it really works because we are actually of course we we can hire a technician whenever we need this some 
in some technical knowledge we don't or skills we don't have, but but you have to be aware and, and know how the process, the internal processes of, of developing an audiovisual product are, so we can try to improve uh, first ana by analyzing the products, so seeing whether it should be uh, another description could be done for uh, news broadcasting or there's something else we can do to improve that mm. uh, through the design process. So all the time, uh, industry and, and experience that you have as a professional helps you to better um, apply for research and also think of, of or and of course, undertake it through, mm. through all the whole, the whole process. So what kind of research do you think we need these days? It's definitely, I think it's, it's it, research has to be focused. I mean, um, in order to research, you to, to do research, you to apply for funds, you need resources, you need people, you need money to mm -hmm. do. And, and there's, today there's always uh, big words about uh, transfer, tech, uh, knowledge transfer yes. to society. Uh, return of investment because they give yes. you some money to expect you to, to give it back somehow. So I I, I do think I do believe that uh, applied from, applied research has to somehow contribute back to society. Sure. Yeah. So in a in a way, um, for for instance, this this project I was just mentioning a moment ago, um, we're trying to improve uh, the inclusion within our society, focus on, on the uh, sensory accessibility mm -hmm. of, so trying to target all audiences so everyone could, could uh, should be watching a, a documentary or watching, and we always uh, mm -hmm. use words, uh, that maybe someone is not watching that, but is listening to that TV mm -hmm. uh, news broadcast and should be uh, able to, to receive the same information Whereas, we if if you can perfectly see a screen and you are receiving information through your visual and audio channels, but if you only have one channel, that channel should still be okay. delivering the whole experience. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you.